Hello. Welcome back to Loose Ball Boys. This is Mitra Bergen. On the other side, you'll find one and only Sydney McCoy. Um, entire week, yes, man. Sir. We're back. Hell of a week, especially yeah. for both our took, franchises. Took, took, took us a while. He heck of a week. Uh, my boys Chiefs won Super Bowl. That was a quite a game. So much stuff happened and yet so little. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just like, it exactly felt like, mean. yeah, it felt like the whole league has been all over the place, especially with all the GP2 stuff going on and my Brooklyn Nets mm -hmm. restarting from basically scratch and Celtics. Um, in Tatum in injuring Brown and like um, Derek White going oh. off like he's next Michael Jordan. It's, it's so much stuff. So many things to oh, talk Derek about. White. Yeah. Woo. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we are of course, officially on, yeah, we're official on all platforms, including YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe. You see us right now, the other um beautiful um beautiful friends. backdrop that you've created. Yeah, backdrop and our friends. You can see a happy LeBron, um, even happier MJ, Kawhi being Kawhi and staff looking and all this and be like, what the I'm in the West now. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, geez. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah, quick one. Did you, were you able to grasp the whole Golden State thing? Vaguely. I, it's just a uh, weird situation. So from what I understand, um, when GP2 was traded, the information about his injury was withheld from Golden State. And when mm -hmm. everybody went to physicals and stuff like that, everybody passed but GP2. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, he has a core, core muscle strain, whichever it is, like somewhere in the thigh. <laughs> I'm like, that sounds horrible. That's like three months um, of rehabilitation. Oh. So, like, if he's going to be available to the playoffs, like, what? <laughs> so, the whole four-team trade was hung up in the air until sunday and i'm like i'm watching super bowl and i need to keep an eye on wosh <laughs> and, and shams stories like seriously <laughs> little carlos correa type action going on yeah i know the fact that Crazy. just a, a, a physical could could have squashed or had the potential to squash a four team trade it's pretty yeah. big You'd it, think it was the biggest was the one i think too oh yeah yeah it was only pfft. I mean, there were, like we taught or touched on last episode, what was it four, three team yeah. uh, trades and then one, yeah, four team, one yeah. or four, it, three, it, it was the, four. It was the biggest one. And um, at first, like, even to start, to begin with, like, why would Golden State trade GP2 if they know that they want him back? <laughs> you know, he won know. with you. Like, <laughs> if you win, yeah. don't touch anything, just keep it as it is um speaking of don't yeah. touch anything uh keep it as it is congratulations you officially have a head coach it means that emo doko officially off the leash from celtics Woo! right horn dog's gone yes sir young bulls back oh i'm so <laughs> yes pumped. sir i, I um, couldn't think of any anyone more deserving of getting yeah. that well Ooh. honestly he he's been performing phenomenal um we'll see how it sticks to them in the mm -hmm. second half of a season, especially with so many injuries. I feel like this season you had way more injuries than usual. Like you had Smart out, you had Rob out, then uh, Tatum decided to split Jalen's school for no reason. Um, then Derek mm -hmm. White this morning, yesterday, um, was in Milwaukee, found out that he has a hole in a drum in his right ear. And then he got hit during a game and split the lip and he was bleeding. I'm like, what is happening to Celtics? Like, why everybody's trying to beat on you <laughs> physically? Because we're, we're top dogs in the East, baby. Did you? I saw this uh, video clip on Twitter where it was Derek White on the bench and, and you could see him mouth out one more game. The dude's yeah. just a freaking warrior. <laughs> yeah, literally. I'm like, our... <laughs> I, I looked at him, I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, are we playing here, NFL or NBA? Like, dear Lord. I think it'd be a freaking offensive tackle, but no. 
he's a guard in the NBA. And this is to your point with how we've just been struck with injuries. Do you want to hear our starting lineup against and yell two games ago dominating. against the Bucks? dominating the floor it was ridiculous yeah. every single game i peek and i uh, with it is just every single game it feels like you're unstoppable force my lord mm-hmm. um i've seen you send we me a screenshot we I, i've seen that you've seen us uh sending me a screenshot um uh, when you played milwaukee and i'm like how of these guys are not even the second unit like what is happening <laughs> So our starting lineup for this game, in which I think the only guy this... who I recognized was Derek White, actually. Oh, and Blake Griffin. Oh, really? The center. <laughs> That's the only two. Like, who are these people? <laughs> well, you, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. You, you will recognize another name. This is this was the starting five against Milwaukee, and this game went to overtime against the fully healthy Milwaukee team. Derek White, Sam Hauser, Grant Williams. Hauser. Big Mike Muscala. Oh, Grant Williams Muscala. played. Okay. And then Blake Griffin. That is absolutely ridiculous. It it feels and, like um remember that um was it not was it Pacers game when whole Nats with Kyrie and Kitty still on the team, like just the full lineup decided to be benched and like Sumner and Kemp Thomas and all of these guys like our literally second unit rookie started the game for us. Like that feels like it. <laughs> Not even one star was yeah, playing. It's exactly. ridiculous. <laughs> was that the game that you came into work that one day and you were just talking about how many free throw attempts there were? Because I think I know. I'm pretty sure that yes. was a game. Yeah. When y'all yeah. played Indiana. Back and forth. Back and forth. It was horrible. Mm. Um, speaking of Nets, but um dude. It's so nice to just baby. It's it's so nice to wake up, look at uh Twitter and Instagram and like, damn, there is no drama in my team, huh? It's it's so nice yeah. to just sit down with a can of beer and watch game. And the only thing that you have to be stressed about is our coach still doesn't have a complete solid idea of what our lineups should be looking like. You know, like that's mm-hmm. the only problem. The, our rotations right now, everything else is just pure ball and you sitting there enjoying yourself. I'm like, damn, this is what it feels like to be, the vibes are back, you know, like the, the culture, the relaxed kind of layback feeling of Brooklyn Nets as it was pre- KD Carey era, it's just, it's back. It feels amazing. Dinwiddie looks great. Joe Harris smiling, dropping threes. And we have this one guy, I don't know if you heard about him. Um, he's pretty good. I think he should make a career in the NBA. Um, Mikal Bridges, our one I'm, and only. Brooklyn, Bro- Brooklyn Bridges, one and only. Um, he dropped gnarly 45 points yesterday. Um, on dog absolutely absolutely ridiculous game it started pretty slow like they've been starting surprisingly slow um these few games well at the same time like is it really surprising um like it it's it's quite a (laughs) you know um quite a challenge to 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 get to the point when you like uh okay we have completely new team and we got us play um like the first game we played as a full lineup against Sixers, it was surprisingly great. Like the first few minutes on the defense, like, good God, like, we were so good. And I texted you, I'm like, I'm in love again. Like, I love watching this team. And it it, it just stayed that way. Um, it, it's phenomenal. I don't know what else to say. Uh, we call Bridges, 17 on 24. Field goal, four out of six threes free throws seven for seven three offensive boards five defensive five assists two steals two block only three turnovers plus 15 on the plus minus dude has been absolutely killing it and it's only on 36 minutes of play unreal um i like, yeah 
I truly believe that when people start screaming like, oh, we traded KD and Kyrie. By the way, I want to touch real quick on KD. I'm going to mention the one thing in Kyrie, but um, besides that, like people are yelling like, oh, um, you're traded superstars for nobody. So I'm like, you know what? Um, when Celtics got Tatum and Brown, nobody said like, oh, you don't have a superstar on the team. You're going to get beat up. And yeah, well, one year he got beat up against Brooklyn in the next year. Look what you do. Yeah. And now you do have superstars. It's not homegrown talent. It's exactly. It's not necessary to hire a talent, a, a superstar. It's not necessary to go after the superstar, bring them into the team and hope that they will, will win you or whatever. Because look how that worked for us. We had three of them. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take us anywhere. We won only one playoff series. And I truly it's... believe that guys like, I truly believe that especially McCall Bridges has very, very high chance to be the superstar for Bill Brooklyn Nets. Absolutely. Especially Dinwiddie, after, like... yeah. I look at Inuity more like... of a more experienced, more of a kind of, not necessarily that because he's not that old, but more he's been here. He played with some guys. He knows the arena. You know, he knows the field. He knows the city. So he's more, it's like he was on vacation in Dallas and like, now nah, I'm good. I'm going to go back home. Kind of a feeling more mm -hmm. when Bridges and Cam twins, they got to learn and and get in the field, get on the team and build themselves up but apparently um yesterday Jacquan said that um Mikhail Bridges and Dinwiddie have they've been most vocal in the locker room they've been pushing the team they've been becoming the leaders more and more and more knowing what to say and where to move team to make sure that everybody on the right spot in playing as a whole and not separate ISO players you know um mm -hmm. yeah i'm and i'm in the I'm, I'm excited especially after yesterday's game oh dear god Ooh, <laughs> we've been so good on the d offense on the defensive end i'm like i'm looking at this team like we definitely not going like in the deep playoffs um and even if we do we're gonna be stopped by a massive force of like box or um celtics but it's not going to be a sweep regardless. You know, it's 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 going to be a... No matter what series we're getting into, it's going to be a solid series just because of our length, of our ability to create shots, uh, our amounts of threes we're dropping and attempting in our boards, everything overall. Just every game, it gets better and better. We're not talking about next game. We're pretending the next game never existed. It just didn't happen. Um, first of all, next game... Um, Again, and not to blame anybody, it's quite difficult to be in the middle of a season and be like, okay, let's go. This is your new team. Go train them. Um, but rotations were awfully horrible um, in the next game, and it is what it is. Also, mm -hmm. I feel like Bronson had the night of his career. That night, everything fell. Every single Back ball. Back to Azalea, too. Azalea. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh -uh. Everything and was think going in. It was raining. I think a big reason you're having, and I mean, this is pretty obvious. It's not like this is going to be like a groundbreaking take, but I think a big reason there's struggles with rotations is I think your least favorite player behind KD and Kyrie now. The dude just can't, he can't play a position and he just pulls from everyone else on the floor. Yeah. Like, what was it that Vaughn said? He said, like, um, it's like when he plays the, I, I I don't want to butcher the the like direct quote, but he said like you can't put him at the guard because that pulls certain aspects from the team chemistry or whatever. So I'm not about Ben. This is what we're we talking about, right? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so with Ben, he said that he 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 looked better yesterday by the way his minutes are limited but i feel like it's more because he doesn't know where to put him um but what he said is that he doesn't know where and how to place him 
Um, do you start him as a point guard? Do you start him with a ball in the hand? Then if you do, you need to look at the positions where he can create a shot for somebody else. So you need to surround him with the good threes and mid rangers knowing that he's not going to be able to create his own shot he's going to be facilitating for others if you put him as a side piece and you put him in without a ball you need to make sure that he is around players who can create their own shot so like either or you need to know where to place him and what i found really interesting yesterday that as soon as Jacques Juan was sending out Claxton, our one and only true center, he was playing mm -hmm. Ben instead. He was trying to put Ben at five. So mm -hmm. on the offense, it looked like Ben is playing point guard. He would be getting the ball and going across the line most of the times and creating a shot. But then as soon as somebody else touches the ball, let's say he throws it to McCall or Cam or whatever, he starts creating screens, creating space, moving players. Um, McCall Bridges was multiple times double team yesterday. And as soon as you see two players closing out on McCall, Ben would appear out of nowhere, create a screen. And he's massive. He's huge. He can screen up two players easily. Like, Easy. and just yeah. make sure that Mikhail can create that one or two steps behind or to the side to make that throw mm -hmm. or make a pass or something like that. So, um, if we forget, and you could buy, and yeah, um, that's what I wanted to say. Like, if you forget about the fact that how much money we're paying him, I actually like him in this team right now. Like, this team with this lineup, with these players, with these abilities, make the most sense for Ben Simmons as a player. His position and the minutes and all, all of the other factors are like yet to be determined. Like yesterday we played our final game of the first half, so now we just wait and hope yep. that through the break while they practice and do all this stuff, they can figure something out. But from what I've seen yesterday, that yesterday was the first game. I'm like, I don't have any complaints for you. Like that half court, not even half court. It was a full court pass. Like mm -hmm. even that's on their um, social media. Just posted a like QB one Ben Simmons. <laughs> just like, <laughs> literally a throw through entire. He he off the line, just toss it towards McCall. And McCall got it like almost in a, um, at the free throw line just turned around and through that mid range, like with a slide fade away, like almost KD looking like fade away right at the boss. And I'm like, dude, that that's filthy, filthy. <laughs> so um, yeah, he's expensive. There are rumors that they're trying to get <laughs> rid of him, um, but a lot to look forward to as a Nets fan. I yeah, know it's but, like, but at the same time, like, he the team will gel back surgery you know yeah like give him another year like you're paying him already you'll have to mm -hmm. pay him out if you want to get rid of him before playoffs if you want to do it in the summer you need to find somebody who's going to pay him that money so like it's going to be tough you most likely will lose in the trade regardless so maybe just give him one more year keep him Stop moving pieces around. Let the team actually, like, everybody's complaining about Nets being Kyrie, KD, Hard, and all of that lineup. I'm like, they barely played 100 games together as a big three. Like, how do you AG expect? And Paul Pierce on the Nets were better. Yeah, than Kevin Durant, they played Kyrie, more. And James Harden. They they played yeah. let more games. Like, how do you expect players to be? great at what they're supposed to do as a team if they did not have enough time to play the ball they didn't have time to because first was kd with achilles then it was Kyrie disappearing because he decided that he doesn't want to be in the building and uh he's been seen in like parties and 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 zoom meetings and this and this and that but like never on the court and harden was the only one who was playing and then harden got injured and everybody's like well 
what 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 do we do now? Like, of course yeah. we're gonna suck because our main lineup never played together. Out of four seasons, yeah. Kyrie and KD played together maybe one and a half. Like, Jesus. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of, Kyrie recently said that he's not gonna talk to Dallas about any um, contracts any stuff regarding money or extensions or anything like that because it's distracting him from a ball? I mean, it's just preventing him from lying again. Why is he I, just I lie mean, to Dallas and say, oh, I'm going to sign with you all. Been there, done yeah. that. No. Yeah. No. He's why gonna why even throw the lie He's out? either going to hit Phoenix. Um, but from – he is a colossal that's, bitch if he goes to Phoenix. I'm not even – oh, dude. That's what oh. uh, I wanted to mention next. Um, he's going to either go to, like, Lakers or somebody or Phoenix. But um, KD was presented today as a new Phoenix Suns, number 35. And I don't have as hard feelings for KD as I had first few days after a trade uh, because I found out all the details Well details we're putting out and i've been reading up on it so apparently last summer when the whole shit show with curry started um kd said this is the teams i want to go to right he had a list of teams if you can figure something out i'll go you'll get your pieces if not i'll stick to you guys we're gonna make it work as a true leader should um and on that note, they kind of postponed the deal. Like, okay, nobody wants you or nobody can afford you, to be honest. So let's see what happens this year. And we start year pretty rough. Everything's shaky. And then we start this 14-0 run and we just beat everybody but you guys. And everybody's like, this is the team to fucking watch. This is the team to make it happen. Ben is putting out points. Ben is here and there. Like maybe he's absent a little bit, but we also have Royce O'Neal, Joe Harris, Seth Curry, Kyrie and KD playing amazingly. You know, like mm-hmm. even you yourself, you yourself said that this is the team to watch. Like a lot of teams yeah. were like, oh yeah, we're going to avoid Nets just because how good they are. And then, I mean, Milwaukee, yeah. Yeah, and Continue. then Sorry. what happens? Yes, and then what happens? Katie gets injured, and Kyrie picks up a pile of shit and throws it in the fan, baby. Yep. <laughs> and KD talked to Marks and Joe Tsai same day as, KD, uh, as Kyrie got traded and said, okay, guys, this is honestly not going to work. We need to find me. We need to find a solution to trade me to Phoenix. He said, I'm going to play off the rest of the season if Phoenix is not going to take me. The reason, take? I mean, the reason, exactly, why wouldn't you take KD, right? Uh, with a new owner. Aiden. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hit well, on the bridges. With, 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 Aiden, with Aiden, there was a line that we couldn't get Aiden because we have Ben so that's like to get eight we need to get rid of Ben that complicates situation so they were concentrating on getting KD where he wants to go because he's done as much as he could for this team in my opinion like could have he done more yeah. eh, he could have maybe I don't know it's a tough one like he definitely could have been better on certain things but at the same time like he played as much as he could play he and was i, I don't he was under- leading he was leading team in amount of minutes in the beginning of the season he was the first player to hit 100 minutes he was playing for 45 minutes a game in the beginning of yeah. the season when Kyrie got suspended and like you can't be mad at him for trying his best it, but at the same time it, it confuses me because like that was the biggest thing for when we talked about this like whether or not he was going to be out the door I thought it would be like a huge motivator. I mean, we all know Durant is very heavy. He has a heavy presence on Twitter with God knows how many burner accounts. Love KD, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but it's like you're given an opportunity where 
the season, you have every excuse in the world to have a throwaway season. But instead of staying in Brooklyn and making the best of it and possibly making a run into the playoffs, because you still have solid pieces. I mean, it's not like Joe Harris and Seth Curry and Patty Mills aren't. I don't know anymore. why Seth Seth like, Seth Curry is still there. I I want to be very very little amount of players who uh, fans who's like please don't trade Joe Harris just let him retire in Brooklyn because like he's been yeah. here for longest he's been here for eight years now I think um I just, think so. just keep him. but like that's but that's why I was like with Durant it's like dude this is like a moment to salvage your legacy because that's like uh, to me it's not as well I mean I'm also a scrawny white kid talking to a yeah. computer about basketball <laughs> so it's like who am I to say that but it's like you could salvage your legacy. It's like, do you know how much respect you'd get if you won a chip in Brooklyn after the shit show? Jesus, yeah, happened? without Kyrie. But instead, shit. but instead, now you're on a, a loaded ass team in the West when the West is in shambles, and it's like now you have a red carpet to the freaking Western Conference Finals because who's beating you? Realistically, you have a half a season after the, the All Star break. Denver, the gel, the only team Denver, that can excluding stop Denver, you is Denver. Nobody and else. however Dallas pans out, but Dallas, I see that team working. Um, Dallas looks horrible. Have you watched any Memphis highlights Bozos. or anything? Dude, dude, Dallas that... looks so bad. I'm like, everybody's like, yeah. oh, I can't wait to see Luke and Kyrie together. I'm like, I me too. And then I watch them. I'm like, yeah, Dallas made a huge mistake. Like, that's exactly what I expected. Mistake. That's exactly massive what I expected. Mistake. Where they're they both passed horrible. up the shot, and they didn't even get a shot off. I forget what game Kyrie, it was, but it was Kyrie like... wanted chip, so he thinks he deserves a ball. Luca is fucking Luca. He knows he deserves a ball. How is that going to work out? And like, I'm sorry, it's not like you got a, a big. Like, it would have been different if, it, if we're talking about like a six three. He's a tiny level player of Kyrie. <laughs> yeah, but as a big, it's like if you if you got. I mean, this is you got rid of six five Dinwiddie, who's pretty good on defense, but he's ridiculous on offense, and he got rid of a wing that you needed. Six mm-hmm. ten, shot creator, defender, long, real three and D player, and you get rid of those two players, and you get in one six and three, insane, insane human being like who wants a ball constantly who w- thinks he will be um at the helm that he will be running the show and guess what he won't be um yeah just mm-hmm. the whole shit didn't work out um with the kd though he was in a press conference today and when he was asked about brooklyn he's like i love the team i love the family i love everything about it um there was a lot of things that I wish went the right way, but I appreciate them going like forward and trying to help me. And I'm glad that they got really solid players, this and that. So he's like really um, tried to be as nice as possible. Brooklyn, like his voice even got shaky. He's like, I'm getting all emotional when I'm talking about Brooklyn, like almost crying. And everybody's like, damn, like he means it. Like have, how often you see he cared. KD. Yeah. He legitimately cared. And, um, that's why I like, I looked, I, I look at this whole thing now. I'm like, realistically, are we sure that let's say Harden doesn't get traded, but Kyrie does mm-hmm. and King D and Harden stay in Brooklyn and play with whoever gets traded for Kyrie. Do you really think they wouldn't stay? Like even Harden says that no. everything was falling apart from the bottom level of one of the players not being available at all times as he was prom as he was promising and you know like everybody expected the top three being together and one player of course didn't do it so it's all started from there and like when Kyrie got traded Kitty's like there's no point of me staying here because I'm not winning anything and I want to win but I don't have anybody to play with. He doesn't want to play with Dinwiddie because Dinwiddie got traded because KD asked for his trade. And you obviously don't want to play with Ben. Nobody wants to play with Ben. 
Um, mm -mm. So in his eyes, there is nothing for him to do here. So he asks for a trade and goes off to Phoenix. And it's going to be funny as fuck if they, if not if, they will lose either in finals or somewhere along the road because it's Phoenix. I'm not scared of Phoenix. I'd, I'm I'd, no, I'm not. I know that it's KD, no, but no. like... We watched like no. if, if we if, if KD is in Phoenix, but you have Booker and CP3 who are doing the same shit that they did last year, mm -hmm. they're not gonna win anything. Dude, I'm 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 hoping like I'm excited like for Phoenix to make it to the Western Conference Finals and then get to the finals. I no, I do think that they will I, I think they will shoot the bet against Denver. Denver's I'm sick of all these. Team. In my Instagram. opinion, yeah, yeah. I it's think like, Denver oh, just... is a way better team. They absolutely are. I'd be scared of Denver, Phoenix. I'm I'm excited to match. They're up soft. Against. They're soft. They're so soft. <laughs> every we have a a a defensive matchup at every position, and we I don't care. We have the deepest Celtics team I've seen probably in my lifetime. Like case in freaking yeah. point, Derek White. Oh yeah, freaking marathon man! I mean, he's won he won Eastern Conference Player of the Week, and averaging twenty five, almost twenty four point five, seven and a half assists, and almost five rebounds. He legit. He had a five game span where he had forty assists and twenty threes, and there's only Dude. two Celtics to do that, Tatum. excluding him. Tatum is a phenomenal player. The more I but watch, that's what him, I'm saying. We the like, more I'm like. We, you are literally like I I get it. Uh, Jokic right now is leading MVP. And I'm like I don't know. Under, I don't understand why. It's just because, because your numbers double. are better. Like just because your number yeah. are better. Like you need to look at the team overall, the impact on the team. And I truly believe that nobody impacts the team as much as Tatum does. Like. I'm fascinated. It, the whole his soft thing with Kobe and his flashiness and all that just pisses me off a little bit. Like that's mm -hmm. the part that I really don't like about him, just being cocky. Um, not funny cocky like John Moran, just cocky. You know, he knows that he's yeah. good and he's doubled down on it. Like that's a little bit that yeah. I'm like, just humble up, boy. Just just a little bit. Win a chip, then we talk. You know, don't be Giannis just yet. You can be like Giannis when you win the chip. Um, but for... Yeah. from perspective of the baller i'm like i'm drooling i'm like every time he's playing i'm like holy fuck man a thousand six hundred and eighty five points so far Jesus. which also broke it's old record my man i think he's I leading and um i think he's leading in the fantasy too with the amount of points mm -hmm. scored he's leading the league in, in points scored i mean he had 38 last night and i'm pretty sure he almost had a, a triple double i think he had seven assists seven assists and nine boards so yeah three a, a board shy and three this is ridiculous short. on 62 percent shooting 60 percent from three and he had 24 points in the third quarter and he's the first celtic for, in team history to do so a notoriously oh bad quarter that is our our achilles heel is the third quarter it, it it's been so since we had jared jerebko and kelly olenic in those days Nope, it's been the third quarter. That is do or die time for the Celtics. And he scored Jesus 24 Christ. points. Ooh. And he's the youngest player in NBA history to reach a thousand career threes. That that and, then, and that's not even talking about Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, like Al Horford, big Allen even out there. Well, he was last night. Rob Williams. It, it's like the depth is crazy. Pritchard, Derek White. Hauser, Cornette picked up Big Mike. It's like I have so much confidence in this team. It's I, like I, this is your year. And now this we have is legitimately your year. Yeah. Um, I just hope we don't. Oh, is we he? Um, I'm. I'm not sure. Did you mention that he's the first player ever uh, before age 25 to score thousand triple doubles? <laughs> oh God, no. I, I think it was a thousand threes. <laughs> No. no, 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 no. He hit a thousand. Oh, triples, uh, triples. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah, no what? threes. No, not triple. Thousand doubles. We're not. threes. I'm like, you, you shooting better than Steph Curry. 
<laughs> yeah, he's not the big O yet. Could be. Could um, be the next Oscar. Yeah, I'm. Um, I think the only player who's overall better than him is one and only Larry Bird. Yeah. Overall, I mean, he's my favorite player of all time. Best small forward of all time. In my biased, very small biased. Small forward. Opinion, but... I, I, yeah, I, I, I agree with everything, but the point when like he's one of the best three point shooters ever. I'm like, mm, no, not three. Everything else, absolutely. But Larry, just, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sitting on the fact that he's one of the best three pointers ever. Because before Ray Ray, I would say he was the best. Well, no, Reggie. Yeah, before Reggie Reg. Miller, I'd say he was the best three point shooter. But I'm 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 heavily, heavily, heavily emphasis on heavily all capitalized. I'm biased, so yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I'm like, from my perspective, I don't know if he's like, he's definitely like top twenty five, not top. I'm not sure about top ten for me personally. He's in my top five. Is the three point shooters? Oh, three, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I my top five three point shooters: Steph, Obviously. Ray Ray. I'd throw Reggie in there. I'd probably put Reggie. No, I'll put Reggie Play. at three because I think he's third on there. Yeah, I think he um, is. Kyle Korver. Uh, yeah, and no, I'd put Larry in that. Larry. I mean, I'm what probably one hundred percent leaving. Play, Play Thompson. Thompson, yeah, what, dude? Yeah, record <laughs> 15, 14. Yeah, triples. okay, okay. Yank, <laughs> Yank Kyle Corver. No, well, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, there know. are way too many to oh. go. Like, Larry, it's like no. situation. Like, he's maybe top five, but he's definitely right outside of a top five. Like, right there, right on the yeah. right on the fence. <laughs> I agree. He's with picking that. over the top five fence. <laughs> yeah, I put Clay um, over Larry. I'm I'm excited about Celtics. Like, um. I, I had a personal hate towards Celtics last year, you know, with all the like Kerry is my was my player. I have to protect our players no matter what. But like now I'm like bash bash him all you fucking want. I don't care. Like shit. I hope you play Mavericks like sometime soon, you know, just to see you guys just shit all over them. Like can't wait. Mm-hmm. Um yep. yeah, but Oh, and Tatum is in the uh, All Star, huh? Three pointer, three point shooter, baby. Hey, yeah. cut to ten years from now, we're still you running can make this it. podcast. Maybe you can make it. Hey, yeah. our top five might be different. <laughs> exactly, Tatum might be in the um, top five. Oh Lord, All Star. Um, <laughs> we're definitely gonna make the entire episode about it separately um, next week. But there's one thing I want to say. Um. Mm-hmm. I remember watching All Star games when I was a child, when Michael was still playing, when Kobe played, Shaq played, and all these amazing guys, right? Um, I caught myself on the thought that I don't have that sensational feeling about All Star anymore. I lost it a while ago, too. Yeah. Like dunk contest? Remember when? Stars Zach Levine, were Aaron Gordon. dunking. Yes, like that was if if you if you think about dunk contest, you know who I would want to see in a dunk contest? Ja fucking Morant, Zion, mm-hmm. Zach Levine again. You know people who are like actually throwing it. Shit, I'll see LeBron. I'll watch LeBron in a dunk contest. He would be amazing in a dunk contest. Giannis, mm-hmm. why would I want to see Giannis in a dunk contest? You know, like Robert Williams, I, somebody like that. I will Marcus say, Marcus Smart. And I, <laughs> Marcus Smart, dude, he could be throwing down windmills. That's what I I'm will saying. Say, like, keep your eye. I don't know how familiar you are because we touched on it briefly before we started yeah. recording. Mac freaking McClung. No, I My know him. On him winning it. Oh, no, dude, absolutely. He. Absolutely. He's killing it. But back in the day, being all star men that, like, it's, it's like being in a Mount Rushmore, right? It's just, it's the holy of a holy. It's the stars. It's all the most biggest, most skillful, most amazing players that are in the league playing together and like doing the crazy shit. Like that's what it was about. And now it's like, yeah, you have the 
players that people voted for but then you have um, that's a mess too then you have yeah with all the traits like KD and Kyrie like KD's not playing Kyrie's not like it, I we, we're gonna touch it next week it's just way too much to talk about but like mm-hmm. n- now you have in the three-point contest like I looked at names I'm like I maybe know two or three besides Tatum and I'm like why what why are we doing this like where is the you know where is the feeling like when you look at the all-star lineup you're like oh that is like so gnarly when you had chuck you had kobe you had Shaq, you had michael scotty rodman like all of these fantastic players like literally the all-stars the shit that you would create in 2k when you like okay i'm going mm-hmm. like and creating the best team ever like this is what it was about back in the day now it's just eh, I, it's the pro bowl it's the pro bowl it's turned into and, the, and then the, the it, whole um uh, what is it the the, the fucking stars like kevin hart and people playing together like I, the celebrity I've, I've star again that. i'm like why why do we sucks. even have that yes obviously it ruins Friday night for you me. Give Hart, you give Hart every year. You give Car- Kevin Hart MVP three years in a row. Like, dude is not. <laughs> he's like what five four. Wow, I, didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> like, wow. Hey, no, congrats to Kevin. I, I can, yeah, shit. Cool. Like, I, I guess he's baller, but like at the same time, I can't take you seriously when. No, ew. What? Stop. You're, you're what three inches Maybe, shorter than Isaiah yeah. Thomas. Yeah, make the <laughs> basketball about basketball. Make the All Star. The name is there, like it's in the name, All Star. Like, dude, why we have random players? They're like not even. Some of the players that are in the lineups, like for a dunk contest, they're like they're not even starters. Mm-hmm. Because like, because the the, the great why? ones don't they opt out now. And I, why the they opt me, out? I don't know. Because of that, they opt out. Because of that, because whatever front office of NBA tried to do with All Star, real stars were like, eh, yeah, I'm fine. I don't want to do that anymore. Like, go, go with your rookies and all that bullshit. Like, it, it seems like at certain point, they will stop caring about MVP because it, it's like, Jokic is going to take a third year in a row. Like, good for him, but, like, I can name at least three players that are way in front of him for mm-hmm. MVP and run. It's KD wasn't All-Star even MVP the top or... three. No, 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 MVP in the league, like, oh. g- overall. Like, KD wasn't in the top three when he was putting insane numbers. Like, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even in the talk. Like, how you can take seriously something that league gives you when the numbers are just it's everything the the whole perception of it is so skewed that it doesn't make any sense it's so it's it's the triple double like he's averaging. how and how it's, it's how take them not one. in the talk we're like yeah he's a front up for mvp how luca is not luca fell apart for two weeks mavericks shit the bed they literally nope. did Jokic it's, missed it's a few games. Jokic missed a few games. And Denver did just a ride without him last year. And B took the fucking team to the playoffs with a broken thumb. Mm-hmm. I truly yep. still believe that Embiid should have gotten um, MVP last year. I do too. I absolutely do too. And it's just turned into a, almost like a glorified scoring title. Where it's just yeah. about numbers. Yeah, most literally. It's all about numbers. That's mean... only actually yeah. what is most valuable player is. Exactly. They've butchered the meaning of it. And it frustrates me because it's just a narrative. And But it's yeah. been a narrative pushing thing for a while. It's like, like Larry Nash Bird won was... two back to back. Yeah. Why? 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 Over him? Shaq. Over Shaquille literally. O'Neal. Literally. Like when we going back, like Larry Bird, Magic um michael taking these mm-hmm. right mvps you're like oh yeah if that player l- leaves the team they're nothing without him like they're literally just falling apart denver mm-hmm. played without jokish and they've been fine like there are teams that like okay without their main star but there are teams that are not 
KD yep. when he was in Nets. Um, Devin Booker. And I, and Devin Booker. I I can like if Devin Booker would be putting up numbers and be like, yeah, he deserves a talking MVP more than somebody else because like Suns are horrible without him. They're horrible. Period. But without him, they're even worse when he was playing. Yeah. You know, like Mavericks. They're nobody without Luca. Celtics. Like you have Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart, but like your real guy is Tatum. It's it's, it's like mm-hmm. it's all about how many boards you have and how many assists and how many points. But we don't look at anything else in the game. We we, we just look at the yeah. three stats of the numbers and we don't care about anything else. Oh, you played exactly. against you you played against second unit of Pacers and you scored fifty seven points. MVP, MVP. No, I know. No, no, and, dude. No, it's not how it works. And it, it just it, it bugs me because it's like Jokic is like it, the number one spot, and that's fine. But it's like I think you should factor in the strength of each conference too. It's like yeah, you could be putting up crazy numbers, and your team could be. I don't know where they are in the West. I'm pretty sure they're their first. They're first. Yeah, they're so like, like first by the massive gap too. I looked. The, the other day i'm like jesus christ like they have no chill <laughs> well they shouldn't i mean freaking the west is terrible well not anymore well but hey that we'll let that pan out in phoenix but it's like i want to okay, see what was the there um they played heat we, hornets magic like most of the dude their schedule warriors hawks timberwolves timberwolves again magic Hornets, Mavericks. Well, Mavericks was on um 15th, so yes, it is. like out of 10 games that I named, you had two solid teams, Heat and Mavs. Like, mm-hmm. let's see, January. Um, they played Celtics, they played Klimber, Timberwolves, Clippers, Cavs, Lakers, Suns, Clippers again, Magic again, Trail Blazer again, Timberwolves, Pacers. Um, yeah, the they lost the thunder they they played against good player sga who's been ridiculous um they lost pelicans um they're playing against box they're losing to box like your schedule has timberwolves at least five times in the past two months i can't take you seriously yeah and this is your mvp <laughs> it's like yeah, that's I, what i'm saying it, it's but a when joke you're playing no against work. but when you're playing against hard teams like box or sixers or somebody else you're like oh no we are losing actually oops get mm-hmm. serious i can't i can't talk about this all day man it's just it, th- th- there's so many things in, in in this league right now it's so frustrating i'm like you know what i'll just watch nba just watch basketball i'll tune into the games that i curious about and i'll i'll stick to that um and i did i did hear i don't know if i just want to touch on this 30 seconds the Cavs are finalizing a contract buyout for Mr. Minnesota double double. Oh, Kevin Love. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. So. Damn. Could Cavs. be a could be Cavs. a factor. Cavs. Could be a good addition. Cavs Not to is, us. I'm like, Cavs leaving Cavs is a lot. Like it's it's a big one. Like. Yeah, I mean, like he. I thought that him switching to Cleveland would be like kind of the, you know, the, the farewell to work years. Yeah. Of his career. Yeah. But I was just looking at his numbers and he's ninth in points for the franchise with a, with what I think I wrote it down. 7,663 points. He's Jeez, second in all time three pointers made 10th in field goals made. And this is all for the, he's a beast. The, he's a beast. Sixth in total rebounds and first in defensive rebound percentages. So it's like, dude, he's not like it bump it bugs me out or bums me out that because I loved him in Minnesota. I thought he like yeah. I was like, dude, I like I just secretly just little me was just like, man, if only I, I like I'd love Kevin Love on the on the Celtics. But then when he made that that switch and it was Kyrie Braun and him out in Cleveland, he turned into kind of a three and D guy. Spot yeah. up three point shooter, and and it's just the mean? fact that he's getting older now doesn't help him at all. No, yeah, he's not the play. Yeah, no, he's well past um, 
Minnesota. Speaking but. of buyouts and uh, moves, um, Russell Westbrook um, is in Good talks with Clippers. I I like Westbrook. Um, when too. LeBron was pushing him to whatever he wanted him to be at, it's, it's, it's not right. He's a really sweet guy and he's really nice. And the whole KD narrative on him and everybody shitting on him, it's like, dude, think about mental health. You know, like it's, look what you did to Simmons. <laughs> dude, he barely can play now. <laughs> like all jokes aside, this is what's coming it from. Like, yeah, we bashed Simmons back and forth for a few episodes, but like, I started thinking about it and I'm like, you yeah, know, wonder he he's afraid to throw a fucking ball in a basket. Cause like people have been shitting on him for years now, you know, like, and same happens to Westbrook now. It's just, it drains your mental health. It, it's, it's horrible. And I, I really hope that he does better in Clippers or wherever he goes. Um, I, I truly wish that Westbrook keeps going, you know, just doing his own thing, man. Me too. I know. I don't like the the hate trains really easy to get behind. And I always I like it's see I, comes, I I'm guilty of comes the two from offenses. Celtics com, comes from Celtics fan. Yeah. Um from yeah, right. fuck Kyrie chant. Like I'm sure I'm sure you've been yeah. chanting then too. I'm sure you did because you know what? I did too. <laughs> yeah. And I I I tempered it when I was around you because I was like, no, nope, you're my buddy. I'm not gonna shit on him. But, too much. Um to be honest, I do think that um, I'm going to – my personal closeout will be on the fact that um, KD left because of Kyrie. Harden left because of Kyrie. Um, everything that's going on insane in the league is because of him. Like, legitimately, in my opinion, he's the softest. Like, eh, KD may be soft, but <laughs> not as soft as Kyrie, my guy. <laughs> nope. I mean, we all know he's going to L.A. Like that's, I mean, where else is he gonna go? He's not gonna stay in Dallas. If a lake can afford, him, like, there's a, so, yeah. I'm not sure how much just, he wants to 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 get paid, but LA Lakers clearly said that like, yeah, we're not paying that much. So I don't know. Yeah. I truly think that whoever is gonna resign him right now, if he's gonna get resigned with other team, that's gonna be his last stint because eventually people will get sick of his shit. Yeah. I completely agree with that. His next landing spot will be his final one. I like who wants him. You can trust him. Like, that's it. Yeah. No. I'm, no. I, as I'm a skill, sorry. absolutely Talent everybody wants him, but it's like it's money. Talent doesn't yeah. outweigh reliability. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't show up in the big moments, no, doesn't matter. I vouch. Um, I I I promise to every listener on our podcast that. This is um, the episode four that it was recording right now. Is the final episode when I'm bashing and talking about Kyrie overall. Um, <laughs> this is my farewell. This is my goodbye. This is me closing the door. Um, this is me riding off in the sunset. Um, this is me just being like, no more Kyrie. No, no more. My team is Brooklyn Bridges and nothing else. It's just frame it great spot Mold. to be in man beautiful you don't have that media spotlight I'm... you have two insanely no not even you have like four really solid players yeah freaking Claxton, our team is Bridges. three and d baby three and d that's all we need i really do think y'all will make a run and if we face y'all i'm I'm not like it's not gonna be it'll go to jv five six games yeah jv said that his goal is for the team to make at least um to attempt at least 50 threes in the game. That's his goal. Can you imagine wow. to throw at least 40% of that? <laughs> hey, man. To land 30 threes. <laughs> that's 90 points. <laughs> yeah, that's how you run it away, man. If you're eat hot night, that is how you create a six foot hole. Your that's team. how you beat that's how you beat jimmy butler and heat shit and they were hot yesterday too he was me. heating up yeah they they they're really good they're um as underrated as it can go i think Ooh. and before we run out of time i want to touch on this milwaukee y'all aren't what you what you claim you are 
our freaking back end bench squad took you to OT when Drew Holiday and Giannis both almost had 40 pieces. Gian, or yeah. Drew Holiday had a 40 piece, and I think Drew was, was like 36, 36. He had a ridiculous game. He had absolutely there's no game that game. There is no question that the Celtics are the best team and the strongest team in the East. The fact oh, no. that, the, Dude. that the Bucks are still getting compared to the Celtics blows my mind. No, absolutely I not. I don't get when, it. When KD and Kyrie got on the floor and they clapped the shit out of box, I'm like, they're nothing. Just because Dude, they won the chip. They won the chip just because they straight up got lucky. They got, it's always based on the lock. They played against yeah. injured Nets. They one because KD wears 700 size shoes, and then they went against <laughs> Phoenix, who all at already are a shitty team. Like your yep. entire run to the finals was based on pure luck and able to injure players and get fouls on you. You know, like that's all you did. You threw the fucking free throws, injure players, and hope that you got lucky. That was it. They're the biggest fluke. I've seen in a very long time. Um, like mm -hmm. even me with my current state team, I ain't fucking scared of Bucks. I'm scared of Sixers. I'll tell you that. I'm scared of Cavs because Cavs are way too good for what people put them on. Like they're actually amazing team, and people just stand there. Like, ah, yeah, Cavs, they're nothing. Fuck, I'll be more worried about Knicks. Your stronger... I'll be a... Yeah, I would be more worried, worried about Knicks more than I'm worried about Bucks. Milwaukee. Get out of here. No, dude. I'm so sick of that stupid narrative. There's so many stronger. Cleveland, to your point, exactly. Took the words out of my mouth. Cleveland scares me miles more than the Bucks heat. do. Healthy heat. Yes. Can take dude, it down. The heat, the heat are the hardest matchup that the Celtics have in the East easily. I think we're... heat for most teams, like when matchup wise. Yeah, for a lot of teams. For Sixers, for Bucks, for Celtics, for previous Nets, for current Nets, any any matchup, Heat, I feel like, is more of a complete team in that case besides Celtics. Everybody does, nobody wants to play Celtics. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Nobody else wants to play Heat either. Like, if Jimmy Butler didn't hit that shot, man. Yeah. Yeah. I Hey, in a way. Yeah. I don't because going to the finals, I, that would have broken my heart, but still like, no, just over the last three, four, we'll just keep it neat and precise. Just from the Tatum Brown era on the heat have been the hardest matchup, excluding Giannis and the fact that he doesn't do a Euro step to get around the defender, but to go straight Euro through step. and never gets called or on like travel for another night. Exactly. Don't get that. But other than that, and we have Grant Williams, the Giannis stopper, so I'm good in that. It's always been Miami. Philly, we've always come out on top. Claxton Even put Joel him in the fucking box. <laughs> Claxton yeah. put Giannis in the box. <laughs> yeah. It's like even when your star center is even saying, oh, that's not a rivalry. You have to win games for it to be a rivalry. Yeah. We we wax we roll through Philly. We just didn't match yeah. up with them last year. Milwaukee we roll through in five games. It's Miami. They're chippy. Jimmy Butler's a, a Milwaukee amazing tanked. leader. Milwaukee tanked in the playoffs uh, in the, to in the standings to dunk Nats because they knew that they're gonna get swept. That's the only reason exactly. we ended up playing you because they knew that they need to lose the spot to not play Nets because they knew that they're not going anywhere with that Brooklyn. Like, and on that note, two things. Milwaukee Bucks sucks. Sixers sucks. Yep. And yep. as a postscriptum, if you're a Celtics and you're having the best record in the league, don't touch your lineup. Just play as it is. Don't do anything I'm so about happy it. With if we didn't pick up Big Mike, I would. That's why I brought up the K-Love thing. I'm like, dude, I yeah. would love Kevin Love. Yeah. I would he, love He would if, fit good. He would fit good. We don't as, need him as a good vet. Yeah. Well, you have too many shooter bigs. Yeah. Even if you take him, you know, as a second unit, like, he, I can see him being happy in the Celtics uniform. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I know. Um, like, I'm excited. I can't wait March 5th. 
the Brooklyn Nets, the refreshed Brooklyn Nets against, let's hope, healthy Celtics. We didn't play each other, healthy teams. No. I, I can't wait. It's a date, man. It's Fingers a date. Crossed. You oh, and it's I. a date. <laughs> yes, sir. You and I. Be there, be square. Uh, baby. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for being with us. Um, our schedule is a little bit tight, so we will be showing up once a week for now. Um, as soon as things I get out of yeah of, of the insanity as soon as everything ties down a little bit we will definitely be here more more present we'll start our new um, segment that we wanted to roll out last week it's just so many things happening at the same time we can do it um mm-hmm. we're trying our best um you know what get what um the first subscriber um uh, the first three uh, followers or subscribers who hit us up on any of our social media will get a sticker uh real loose ball boys oh, sticker yeah. we have some we're not selling anything yet but we have stickers and we'll definitely mail you one um courtesy of dimitri yeah. with a with a signed card how about that we'll sign a card for you Woo. Uh, one day in the many many years it might worth something <laughs> you never know oh yeah <laughs> Throw that in a time capsule. Maybe, 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 maybe in the five years down the road, we'll be working for Athletic or something. <laughs> oh yeah, we put in House of Highlights out of business. Bonus yeah. account. I hate it. I don't like it. Um, with all the respect to all the accounts around, I, that's the one I'm like, no, um, no, fuck right. Omar. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> final. <laughs> that's a final note, guys. <laughs> I don't care. I hope he hears it. <laughs> But that's, that's, we know we, they all listen to it <laughs> I, I know our listeners our future listeners will agree with me in that statement but yes i will oh yeah a lot a, a lot of a lot of people will agree Sorry that for that I aggressiveness do, to close for one. <laughs> that's not aggressive it's bash all right um <laughs> we'll be back next week with a all-star pre-all-star episode is it next yes, sunday sir. this sunday yep. what is it when jesus well, I, it'll see. I don't even know. Friday, I know this it's Friday. Pro Bowl. So, so, Sorry, so tomorrow yeah. is it tomorrow? Um, next Friday? No, I think it's next Friday. Either or, we'll see you next we have, week. I think we have games. Yeah, we'll yeah. Cover whatever. It. We'll I don't. It. Fuck the All Star. We're not going to cover All Star. <laughs> we'll talk about something else. We'll yeah. we'll figure it out. All right. Have a wonderful night, day, whatever you are, whatever you're doing. Just enjoy yourself. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Absolutely. We'll be back. Thank you for taking the time to hear okay. our opinions. Yeah. Comment. As always, it was a like, pleasure. Subscribe. Yeah, always. Always a pleasure to be here and and, and and release that cloud with the thoughts from our hats. Um, a complete <laughs> mess. Jesus. <laughs> this is interesting. Yeah. Outro is taking way too long. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we out. We see you later. <laughs> <laughs>